Okay, so we've seen that at least the larger pieces are tracked. How is yeah. that how does that done? Yeah, so it really depends on the size and most of it is through radar. Okay. So the US Space Force operates and tracks a lot of it. So, you know, we have 10 meter to 10 centimeter stuff down here. Now, okay, so here, this, to explain this graph, this is the size of the particles. So that, so that could be a small bit or an entire satellite. We don't and care what it is. And this is the orbit. So that will be geostationary orbits, and this will be the low Earth orbits. That's right. And so most of the stuff that we're worried about is kind of up to about 2,000 kilometers. That's where most of our junk is, mm -hmm. and most of our satellites are. So radar is very good at picking up the things that are very big, mm -hmm. and it can also pick it up very far. So that's obviously not surprising because they want to communicate with their satellite anyways. They want to download the spy data or whatever the case it is, yeah. and they want to know where it is and what it's doing. Mm -hmm. you, they are starting to push down into using radar, for instance, at the Haystack Observatory uh, outside MIT uh, in Cambridge, a different Cambridge from where uh, you're familiar with, but in Massachusetts. They can use radar dish uh, inside this geodesic dome to track bits that are now down to maybe five to 10 centimeters. So they're able to push it a little bit smaller, but still not that big. You, and they're also not that successful. As we see here, they can only do it to about 30 degrees. So what that means is they can only do it if it's high enough in the sky. If it's low on the horizon, it'll be too confused and they'll see it due to things like atmospheric interference. And once you've found an object and measured its orbit, does that allow you to know where it's going to be forever? I mean, if it's, if it's a fair way up, that's going to work because, but in the low Earth orbit, right. the, the orbits are going to be changing all the time because of atmospheric drag. And that's not predictable because you get a big solar flare, the atmosphere will expand and that will drag things down a bit. Exactly. So for the, especially for the small ones in a low Earth orbit, you're going to have to go back and reobserve them over and over again. Sometimes you know. almost every orbit, that's right. I mean, even in one single orbit around the Earth, the prediction versus um, where it actually is can differ from say a meter to sometimes a few kilometers. And that may be the difference between passing right through you and passing right into you. Yes. So as you said, up here at 36,000, 10,000, it's not gonna change a lot and there's not a lot of junk. So again, easy to deal with up there when you're changing rapidly a low earth orbit and you're already small. And as you said, lots of different factors come in. It could be really hard to keep track of not just finding the thing in the first case, because you first have to know that piece of junk is there, but then keeping tabs on it every time. And if you go to look here and it's actually there, well, you miss it. And now you have to then reacquire it. So now you start back from scratch. So it's not to say, hey, we know it once, job's done. You have to keep track of it multiple, multiple times. So the effort of building radar stations is now a big part. Now, when we look at the communication part of this course, we went and visited Tidwinbilla, the tracking station near us. Well, it is the part of the network of the NASA Deep Space Network. One of the other dishes is Goldstone, identical to the one in Canberra because they want the identical receiver. But they're now using this giant radio dish to be able to find small junk. The idea is, well, if you have a big enough sensitive dish to go track spacecraft a billion kilometers away, you may be able to find a small thing closer by. And they're actually starting to have some moderate success doing this technique through radar, but still there's a limit based on the radio waves, right, Paul? That's right. I mean, uh, if you're working with a radio wave that's like 50 centimeters in wavelength, something that's much smaller than that, the waves will not, instead of bouncing off, will just bend around it that's and right. go off in some other random direction. So you'd need to use high frequency radio waves to spot things that are small. That's right. And there's a limit just to physically that it can do it. So other techniques are trying to be invented. So one is simply almost kind of like, um, like a dust mat in space, putting um, sheets and counters on the International Space Station to keep track of small bits as it comes through. Yeah. So kind of like sticking out a net and seeing what you catch, they're trying to see what is the ratios, what is the densities of these really, 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 really small bits. So uh, that's not going to help you avoid it. No, that's right. This is purely keeping track of what's up there so you know how bad the problem is. Exactly. That's right. So this is a, a good knowledge for modeling, but doesn't do a lot 
for avoidance. And in fact, the Hubble Space Telescope is a great example. It had one of these trackers put on the side. And as we'll see here, it was riddled with little bits of junk. So one of the big ways that people are trying to do is how do we use a different type of light to track something really small? So if radio waves have the problem where, as you said, for 50 centimeters we can't do it, optical to infrared lasers have a slightly better advantage, right? That's right. I mean, so if you're looking at something that's smaller than a few centimeters, we need to look with a wave that's smaller than a that's few right. centimeters. We could, in principle, go to microwaves or infrared, but they don't get through the atmosphere. Exactly. So the next place where you can get through the atmosphere is down in the visible or near infrared, and that would mean maybe just trying to spot them. Exactly. Um, so you, you could, if, uh, you often see the satellites just after sunset because they're reflecting sunlight down, uh, but the equivalent of radar would be to actually, I mean, radar sends a pulse of radio waves out and right. it reflects That's back. The optical equivalent of that would be uh, sending a pulse of laser light up exactly. and measuring the reflection coming back. Now this has been done to the moon, right? They've yes. sent laser beams to the moon, measured it back and some great successes. And so now there's a lot of work of if we can get a laser beam, which can find objects now instead of 10 centimeters, a centimeter, and maybe a bit smaller if it's really close, we bounce the laser off of it, a pulse, and it bounces back, and we have a telescope that says, hey, we found something. Now you still have all the problems with radar because you have to still keep track of it, you still have to know it, and this smaller bit is even harder to find, but it may be a way of actually opening up tracking these very, very small particles that, as we see, can do lots and lots of damage.